Are you a left-legged fighter? Are you a right-legged fighter who struggles to fight against left-legged fighters? If you're interested in figuring out the tips and secrets of fighting right against left or left against right, you definitely want to watch this video. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Fight Chat Friday. We are TKD Coach Academy, Adrian Byrne and Richie Ford. And uh, our Fight Chat Friday is uh, every Friday our attempt to bring to you a little bit of the very best of ITF competition, sparring, performance, coaching, and training. And if that sounds like a conversation you could sink your teeth into, then pause this video, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell button to be notified every Friday when we go live with another video. So, Richie, what was our topic for today? Yeah, so today we're actually going live live for the first time. So we're going to trial this and see how it goes. So if you're tuned in, feel free to get involved in the comment box if there's something that interests you or maybe it sparks a question in your mind based on what we cover. So if that's the case, get involved in the comment box there and we can delve deep into certain topics. So today we're really going to look at the left versus right contrast style. So this is something that really pops up in ITF sparring in particular. So do you lead off the left? Do you lead off the right? And mm -hmm. um, so we're going to look at some shots available and some certain things that come up a little nicer on this side. And um, so we, we actually put a poll out on Instagram yesterday yeah. asking people, which was interesting. Me and Adrian were um, kind of guessing beforehand that most people would lead off the right. But it turns out it's almost 50-50 with like hundreds of votes. So it's very, very <laughs> interesting to see that. Um, so we were coming up with a, a, bit, a bit of a, a hypothesis that maybe most people are leading off the right leg and the left leggers maybe having a bit of an advantage there um, when you come up against somebody new. So yeah, so I was a 51% to 49. So very, very close, but interesting to see nonetheless. We expected the margin to be a little bit wider. Definitely. So yeah, we're going to really delve deep into that topic today. We're going to look at certain shots that are available to you on this side, some things to watch out for. Um, and because like a lot of people, when you come up against a left leg fighter for the first time, it's a little bit tricky, a little bit awkward. So it's good to know what to watch out for, good to know what to, what's available to you, what are some things to avoid. Um, so that's the plan with today's video. Hopefully you enjoy the video, take some valuable information. If so, make sure and hit this video like. We would really appreciate it if you shared it as well. And as we said, get involved in the comments. Cool. So what we might do is start with uh, a little video that is uh, from the World Cup in Budapest uh, not so very, very long ago. And the final of the 62 kilo senior female, um, Camilla Canut and Sarah Lahan. And we picked this video just because it illustrates so many of the, the points that uh, it's kind of the features of a right versus left battle uh, that mm. we're going to highlight throughout the video with other examples. But this one gives us an opportunity to just kind of, I suppose, introduce the topic. So. We'll roll that and uh, give a quick breakdown of the kind of topics that are going to come up. So straight off the bat, you can see that it, it's basically both people's um, stomachs area, their, their belly really, is facing in the same direction. So that's the stance we're really looking at here. Um, so the direct line is a little bit straighter. And straight off the bat, we can see here that when you go to punching, because of this straight line, it's very, very important, Sarah's in red here, that she attacks and tries to get her foot to the outside. So by taking your front leg to the outside of your opponents, because of this straight line, the person who gets to the outside is, due, is generally able to punch a little bit cleaner and a little bit more direct. So it's super, super important. Yeah, definitely. And uh, another feature that comes up, particularly with flexible opponents, is your counters, if you're used to fighting against the same-sided opponent, 
are have to change so where you might look at a back kick or a band aid under here here we're looking at a front leg hook kick and that's a common feature uh similarly you know there's a uh, you know something to be said for in the same ways you might change to this facing to try and close off a match and deny scoring opportunities sometimes if this is the preferred facing for both fighters one can change the facing put the other leg in front in order to open a shot that wasn't previously there so in this case sarah changing looking for the blitz and it sets things up a little bit differently so those will be some of the features that we'll be looking at so the foot positioning as we go through these first couple of clips is going to be something that we'll look at how to make sure you're, you're being effective with your punches and not slipped in that way uh, we'll definitely uh, have a look at uh you know effective foot positioning versus the ineffective there um the next thing we'll be looking at is the uh how the backhand works and it, it just again because like richie was saying the direct li the, it, the line is a bit more direct the backhand can be very effective in this case where on the opposite side uh it, it can be harder to sink the backhand in and get a good connection on the body it, it really does kind of sink in very well on this side the hook kick we mentioned yeah, and, the, and the, the change of legs, as well as one or two other topics that will come up that weren't featured in this match. But that's kind of where we're going to head with this one. And uh, hopefully we can get, um, you know, some good discussion. And again, if there are any questions from anyone who's watching live, please do drop them in the chat. Uh, this is a format that we'd like to play with and maybe go live uh, every Friday in future. So Yeah, we have one comment there from Lawrence already saying, good morning from Canada. So uh, hey, good morning, Lawrence. So now we know we're hitting Canada in morning time. Okay, well, that's good to go. <laughs> So uh, the first one, uh, our topic we're going to look at is foot positioning. And uh, we're going to start with just a, a couple of examples from the recent World Championships in, uh, in Germany. And this is uh, Magomed versus Ahmed. So let's have a look. Mm. So straight off the bat, you can see that direct line initially. So it's just trying to get past that um, kind of like initial phase to get into range. Uh, and it's really a battle of who can get through that initial kind of opening gap and set their feet in the right position so you see we have um this one here the side kick is always a play no matter what stance you're in mm -hmm. but because um, um magomed here in red gets his foot to the outside of the shoulder it allows ahmed in blue to come through that gap a little bit more so that's the direct line that we're talking about so once you get rid of the initial firing line then there's almost like an open gap for you to come through and be a bit more um, dominant with the hands yeah, definitely. And I mean, one of the features that we will see of a right versus left battle is that, you know, if someone is a quality sidekick fighter and they ha they have very, very good ability with that sidekick, it can really nullify the whole thing. You know, it, you know, it can really uh, set the, the match uh, on a particular tempo where it's all about breaking down the sidekick and who's going to get that first score. And if there isn't an early score, the match can be a very dead kind of affair. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's just the nature of having that more uh closed off scoring opportunities so um it's good to kind of see for th where the guys were there like the, the work that uh initially um uh Ahmed has to do to get through Magomed's sidekick here and get on into a good scoring position uh where he does end up with that front foot eventually on the outside of Magomed's front foot and that's one of the key features that we're going to look to in this foot positioning um you know he it, it's it's hard to uh would say get this wrong when you have uh, the same leg in front but very easy to get it wrong when both people have mm -hmm. the same leg in front yeah i think as well something very important to note is when you have this setup of left v right mm. generally it's going to be a very straight line battle and the, the angles are, are very subtle as opposed to when it's in the opposite way if you're if it's left v left or right v right mm. the angles and the lateral movement is a little bit more in play so when, when you see this direct line that we're talking about, it, it's very much um, a straight line battle, which really plays into the, the likes of the side kick. We see it later on the show as well, the, the line side turning kicks and things like that. Things mm. that really come in that direct line. And it just means then if you're going to be entering into that, you need to have the shots and the, the tactics that open up the game when you need a score. So mm -hmm. let's have a look at one of Colm Carl. Uh, again, positioning his feet very well to get an advantage with hands. Mm, this is a, a great clip not only does he position his feet but also his body so you'll see that he goes from side facing to full facing which allows him to get that backhand directly in which is another little topic we'll cover as well the, the the clarity and the visibility of that backhand particularly in this stance so it's very good you can see that opens up when you're in this left v right battle it opens up the back leg turning kick to the body 
usually after a, a punching sequence. Mm. So that's usually the kick that you're going to be looking for, like you see here in slow mo. It's the back leg now with the turning kick to the body. It's just that Riley brings his leg up to kind of interrupt that. But usually it will be the back leg that's open for the turning kick to finish the sequence. Yeah, absolutely. And the, I suppose... Uh, in case we haven't been completely clear about it, what we're really talking about in terms of position that front foot is if your opponent, if you're the left-legged fighter, your opponent has their right leg in front, you want to be on the right side of their right foot. So as they're looking at you, you want to go on the outside to the back. On your outside. Yeah, the, to the back. Uh, and what that allows is or forces is the second there's any turn in their body, they're going to be punching over their shoulder at you. They're going to, only going to be able to bring one hand to bear, and that's huge. And when it goes wrong, it means you end up on the inside of their body. Any punch at all deflects you away onto the inside, and it mm -hmm. makes you very, very ineffective. So we will look at that sometimes when it comes to blitz and counter, but the, the, uh, you know, it's just such an important basic principle. And because you're coming from a side-facing position, you may often be leading in with a side kick, or we'll later look at the blind side dolio, uh, that when the foot lands from that, you're often putting your foot down to where your partner has that outside position on you and the advantage with the hands. So it's just something that we want to pay, you know, bear in mind as a feature of this type of match. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because you naturally will probably land your foot directly in front of theirs. Mm -hmm. So as Adrian said, if you get to that inside, you're, you're essentially trapped with your body position and it's impossible to punch. And if anything, they're going to get on top and be more dominant with the scores. So it's very, very important to get your own foot to the outside of your body position. So let's have a look at an example from Julio, Julio Carlos, USA. Um, and this is going back to the World Championships in 2013 against New Zealand. And in this case, a uh, competitor from New Zealand actually walks himself into that position and he's, he's taken a very defensive stance. He's denying scores as far as he's concerned. But what it's done is it's left his right foot inside Julio's left Oops, I've jumped back to another one. So it's left his uh, front foot inside Julio's left. And what that does for him is Julio uh, can quickly capitalize on that, make that step forward, and he's trapped him. So there's mm -hmm. there's nowhere to go from there. Just keep an eye on Julio's left leg here the whole way. See, it's on the outside of the right leg. I think Augie is the New Zealand competitor Fair in blue. Page, yeah. So I think he has this on the outside the whole way, and it just allows him to get forward on hands and then... Uh, the blue competitor is completely trapped and even with a jump to adjust the position it's not enough to get you back on side sometimes you can jump to adjust the body in midair but when somebody's already attacking you especially on the edge it's it's not good yeah and i mean you have to imagine then if if augie it is it, like he's looking to take that defensive psychic he's waiting for it but because he's still in motion it's let julio come through um and you know it, it's not a particularly dangerous position to be in with to have your your like your back half facing your opponent that way as you're moving but this is the risk you take, and Julio capitalized on it, I think, quite well there. Yeah, back kick is probably your only get-out-of-jail uh, clause there that you can yeah. have if you're in that position. But you have to be so sharp and so quick with it and be able to switch on the back foot as you transition mm. your weight backwards. And there, when you're on the edge, you don't have that option. So Yeah, because the back kick... That's just not been there. Yeah, the back kick you see as well, when you're throwing your back kick into uh, from the opposite facing, you have that little bit of leeway that you can hit the back of the body. You can kind of let it slide along the belt and hit the back hip or whatever. Whereas if you're going to land a back kick off of your left leg into this, you've got to hit the front hip, which means mm. your space has shortened by, you know, the width of the person's body. You've taken away a foot, you know, 14 inches, whatever it happens to be. Um, and, you know, that's just made your job that much harder. And it's a smaller target. So speaking of the hip, Adrian, actually, what what are your thoughts on the whole idea of a side kick, an attacking side kick on this side? Because if both um, stomach areas are facing the same direction, mm. it's going to be your heel that covers the hip, yeah. as opposed to if it's the opposite, it's going to be more toes um, that are going to be coming towards with the side kick. And it's it's easier, obviously, to get through when somebody has their toes against you as opposed to heel. So do you think there's any um, kind of idea there on? whether the side kick is a bit more effective in this straight line as opposed to close dance. I think when it lands, it hurts. Is there, mm. you know, you know, as you said, it tends to land uh, heel deep rather than necessarily, we'll say, the top end of the foot and the toes pushing in. Um, it's, a, you know, obviously you're going to have a, an easier time nudging the side kick out of the way and ending up on the blind side uh, from so. this particular facing. Um, and the, the counter threat to that, as we'll show you later, is if you're able to show the side kick and show the high uh flicky dolio uh the over the blind side dolio that kind of keeps the person from 
was say threatening your sidekick too much mm. but yeah there, there's definitely a lot of play in the sidekick and the, 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 the question as well of um you know because of where you want to land your foot often in this facing uh you know if you're attacking with it you might just let your toes angle up a little bit which breaks the textbook rules of course but what it means is you tend to land in a better punching position Mm -hmm. so you know it's one of the little changes you might make if you're sparring on that side yeah definitely we actually covered that in last tuesday's live session as well so if you want a bit Mm -hmm. more details on that guys of the foot position to set up your 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 foot to the outside a bit better in this stance check out the live session we did last tuesday on footwork uh we have a comment there from mirby's workspace so hey guys good night from korea uh so uh good to yeah, have good you on from korea as well we have good morning and good night and it's good afternoon here in ireland so we're hitting all stretches of it so they're uh, that that's really good i want to jump on from here and look at the backhand and we said the backhand is clearer and in some ways it just lands that little bit sweeter uh when both people have the same leg in front and i have some absolute beauties of examples here so we'll start with uh, vitaly solovey from ukraine Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think the, just the clarity of it in this stance because it has to travel a little bit more distance. That the straight line of it, it, it's not so closed off, and you're not so close to your opponent compared to the opposite stance. So that also allows you to kind of get more. It just gives you that very direct visual for the referees to say, okay, that that very clearly hit. Um, and yeah. so it's, it's almost a bit longer, like a jab. Um, and a joust really a really long technique and it just it's just so clear for the judges you see keen ince's one here that he just as he gets there it's so long so clear it's, it's almost impossible not to score that shot and you notice keen's foot position here as well watch his left foot like we spoke about earlier getting his left foot to the outside very important just in case there's a continuation there he's ready to push on forward as well it just happens that he caught his opponent so flush that it ended the sequence and he had to tie up yeah absolutely and you can see again straight away the referee is often forced to step in because once you come to hands and you have that outside position your opponent's body is starting to turn so what it often leads to in scoring sense is if that first shot that you throw lands there's almost like a pause where the referees go mm. and that's that that was a you know a nice clear score uh the job's a good one almost it's like done. point sparring for a second yeah almost yeah and i think you know that's like it's a mental thing as well where the the judges it's like and that puts a full stop on it like you know there was yeah. there was a contact and there was nothing back from the other person no okay well i'll give this person a score and that can be so 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 valuable in inspiring to have a clear momentum shifting three four judges see something go through that can be really big and you know what we see is just as much as when people have you know right versus right or left versus left sometimes the sidekick just isn't a sidekick you know the foot isn't between the attacker and the opponent and if there's anything of a turning kick shape to it and you can trap the uh the foot at the shin or at the ankle on the way in that you know backhand shot gets very clear and again of course that's Mm. all uh that that's all distance control and when we speak about this as well like when the judges are scoring these punches they're like adrian said they're looking for that distinct one that's different so if, I, if we're trading and you're punching and I'm punching, it, it's either that clear one to finish off the sequence or that starts the sequence or one that's obviously very, very visible are the ones yeah. that are going to get through. Otherwise, they kind of just count it as kind of like, OK, like that's equal, that's equal. And there's no real difference there. So there's no scores gained or or lost really so it's really getting that extra one and that's where we see linking up the kicks to finish your punching sequences as well are so important and so that's just another variation of making it a clear finish of the sequence yeah and i think that's uh, we've a comment there from matthias but uh, it kind of just reinforces that if you land that big backhand mm-hmm. you know you really have to add that dolio to it that's the that's the icing on the cake that's the gravy because you can make that uh, you know a one point into a three four pointer and you know mm. that's momentum that's a big 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 swing and the judges are going to see that clear as day so yeah if you've done the work and you've done the leg work you've got you've stepped through the leg you've made that strong backhand you are in the perfect position to open up your back leg and there's yeah. like it's like a wave you see it coming like and your opponent you know when it works well if you've got the good lean on that backhand so that the person is their balance is taken because you've probably interrupted a kick their balance is taken they're not going to be able to do something about that back leg coming through. So it really is just about hitting the right target with it. And we'll have some, uh, I think we have some good examples coming up. 
it's because that that direct shot as well is so long and so direct it actually because of the lean it allows you to lean pull your body weight back a little bit to get the kick up so there's that that like pendulum effect of yeah. going lean in lean out and that gets the dolio in very very nice onto the body and if you can land that it's a lovely lovely sequence so we'll go to a slightly different one so this is looking at maybe the more leggy fighters where you're being threatened with that high shot and remember this this becomes a thing because once you've got uh you know that left versus uh, right uh kind of situation the, the your target areas are close to you there's much less that you can actually see so you're very often forced to try that over the shoulder or that higher like high line attack which means you have to deal with that high line attack when it comes as well so we have some examples of taking a lovely hook kick uh under the shot or under the leg and this is something that you wouldn't necessarily do at all in the reverse facing so having mm. a look at maxime Bujold. yes yeah, so it's very nice you can see that like by him going high and you coming underneath that's a very uh, prominent principle that we always seem to uh, come up time and time again so getting under that is lovely to go to the head and it's really nice shot for maxime that really um, is um yeah you can see it's so clear as well so it, it's nice to get that shot and just the the footwork then that allows you to step to your open side and get free is nice we'd see a, a variation of this with sarah lahan in a minute where yeah. her opponent continues on and just be um that the direct line that she keeps then allows her opponent to get after her as well so it's a nice little trick there by maxime yeah so see you see the continuation here and sarah recovers extremely well but for a second she's in trouble here but it's a great recovery yeah and i mean that's it and you like in throwing that shot you have to realize you're pro unless it absolutely takes the jaw and lands beautifully there's probably nothing that you can really do to uh avoid losing some momentum yeah. like what you are looking for is realistically we're taking a shot that you know is uh an absolute staple of uh of karate you know it's uh like it's a huge scoring technique in karate um it comes up in point kickboxing as well but like for us it's not the the hook kick that you'll throw in your pattern it's you know it's not yeah. a powerful shot this is reaching out with the tips of your toes to try and make a contact and score three points but the reward for this one is on the scoreboard so you mm -hmm. have to accept that the the trade-off is if they have momentum coming forward you are going to end up losing a bit of momentum you're going to have to make a recovery so like maxine did you can take a little step to the uh, to the side as you go so you can step to the open side as you throw the hook kick so moving your back foot slightly forward into the side uh, and that tends to take you off the line of their attack and so they don't have the momentum there or as sarah has done she's made the foot to foot recovery and then pivot so mm -hmm. it, it's ended up with a full turn but it but the concept is the same you're looking for a, the same just on the other side. a pivot we have lawrence mm -hmm. back with us uh, so appreciate it good to see you uh we have uh, if you're a left-legged fighter against a right-legged fighter or the other way around is there any technique you would absolutely not do and uh i don't know that there's ever an absolute mm -hmm. um you know but yeah Oh, the, the the big thing i would say is uh like maybe it's not an absolutely never do but i'll, I'll start on this one uh very often people get so used to training particularly if they work a lot of pads and not an awful lot of uh, uh constraint led approach stuff um they will have a, a tendency to go to the same side so they go to hands and they finish on the same side you know they, they finish with the with say their front leg to the back. and they'll end up kicking to the back so we see this all the time at the very highest level people getting warnings for kicking to the back because they do what they're conditioned to do um you'll also see maybe throwing a reverse turning kick into the back the shoulder uh you know that kind mm. of a thing so the biggest thing i would say is it's not a case of shots you would absolutely never do or shots that you know it, for me anyway it's far more a case of you can use every opportunity in your training whether you're right legged or left legged to fight both styles and make sure you understand there's a mental switch that clicks for when you have one leg forward or the other and that you recognize that situation and it's almost like you'll you'll chunk out or filter out the shots that aren't relevant um but i think that for me is the important part there yeah i have to agree and, and it kind of sets us up nicely as well to a band aid option that we will look at later mm -hmm. lawrence um so being able to switch to the open side so you can get that on on the other side it's very very rare that we'll see like a blind side spinning technique so a banded dolio for example mm. because like the gap between your shoulder and your head is is very small so to be able to get something to come across that line it, it's very hard to do most of the time you'll probably hit the back 
and um, so we, we we will show you an option later on of how to set that up onto the opposite side yeah um but it does also kind of lead us into a little bit in terms of the, uh, the same kind of concept of a shot and how it works differently depending on whether you're right versus right or left versus left uh compared to being uh you know the the right versus left option um and that's looking at uh dealing with the front leg using a, a turning kick to the body so in our left versus right approach we've got vitali here uh again thanks vitali for giving us a few shots to to put on video and if anyone else is doing great work out there make sure you share it with us on youtube we'd love to be featuring more people um but the it's about sinking the body low looking for a line under the sidekick and this really kind of works beautifully once the sidekick is a bit higher than hip level um mm, something very very important that needs to be addressed here as well as watch his left hip see so the the target for his opponent in red is vitali's left hip look at the way he takes that off the yeah. line if you don't take that off the line the shot is not there so it's so so important to be able to remove that hip and switch that hip to the back or take it off the line slightly so here he switches it to the back hip so by getting the hips low and coming under it's very like it, it's one of these shots that it's it's 50 50 maybe you land it maybe you'll go low but it's very much a disruptive one and, and it impacts it stops your opponent and mm. it really keeps them guessing. It gives them another option. Are you going low or are you going high? And a lot of time you'll see Vitali and other guys who use this will land it. And here is a lovely combination using it, linking it up with the front leg. So one, and now we have the opposite side on the blind side here. And we'll, we'll talk about the blind side, uh, Dalia Chaggy, in a minute. But um, the reason that that basically is, is on is because when you're leading off a side, because of what we spoke about with Lauren's comment earlier, you're not really expecting something over your front shoulder. Yeah, um, absolutely. especially if you're if you're sparring with somebody who's well we had a theory that most people lead off the right so because of that it's rare to see someone leading off the left but i still think based uh, on definitely. my own experience i think that's what happens most people will read uh, lead off the left so when you see something coming on that side of your body it's a bit unusual and it just takes a second for the body to adjust and before you know it, you have to get clipped yeah, so maybe this is the time to have a quick look at my kind of uh, concept, uh, which is which is that I believe that you know within society we don't like we have something far more like ninety ten right sided to left side or maybe you know eighty twenty. I don't know exactly what the number is, but certainly when you observe in your club, you see far more right sided fighters than left. But at the top level, you it's almost fifty fifty. Like there there is mm. you know we'd see that at championships. It's no trouble to go out and find a left sided fighter, and they do very very well, of course. Um, some of the people we're featuring now are among the best in the world. So um, the, what I do think happens when you're a left-sided fighter naturally is you spend far more time in that zone where you're experiencing fighting against right-sided fighters and left-sided fighters. And you have far more time spent dealing with this particular environment, the right versus left dynamic, than the right-sided fighters do. And then as it layers up and layers up and you get to the international level, it, it equalizes a bit and uh, and so on. But I do think that's a huge part of why we, we're seeing a number like that. I have to agree because me personally, I'm left I'm left legged and left handed. So I used to lead off my left mm. and I used to see that blind side shot become an option so often because yeah. I just I feel that it's not something like naturally when we're sparring and when we're interacting with an opponent, we're chunking all the information subconsciously. So shots that occur time and time again we we chunk that information in our brain subconsciously to be able to be more efficient and yeah. adapt better in future and then that also works on the flip side so if there's something that you don't see very regular and then it comes up it catches you by surprise a little bit so that's why we can see that shot that comes into play and um, it, it's, it's like the same principle as we say don't do a foot to foot side kick but then because we say don't do it and it's not regular it becomes a shot that people land every now and again because it's by surprise and to contrast that, I'd be right-sided. And so the same shot that you would see coming up again and again in the blind side dolio, I see as the, the, the hacks. And, you know, so it's achieving the same function. It's coming over that blind side shoulder. But I'm seeing that shot develop more often than I'm seeing the blind side flicky dolio develop, where that shot for me was often a back leg finisher or it was a uh, like a, a counter on a change of leg or something. So, but it does really illustrate how you perceive you actually perceive the entire environment differently depending on what leg you have in front so mm -hmm. we need to train both and be familiar with it that's actually a shot Adrian that I didn't think of uh, based on Lauren's comment you probably won't be able to throw a direct no. um, axe kick off the front leg on this side yeah. like if you land it 
you you want to be have serious dexterity and flexibility, but it's probably not a shot that's going to be on because of that direct line. Being able to get your leg up into that line um, is probably going to be very difficult. So that's probably one shot that's not in play. I wouldn't say that you wouldn't use but it's mm. probably not in play. Actually, funnily enough, when I was looking through the videos for this, you find an awful lot with particularly the junior female and the very flexible girls, um, you know, who love that shot. They, you know, they float that uh, as a defensive shot, they, you know, the front leg hacks, axe kick. But when you put right against left, you end up with a situation where it just doesn't do anything and it floats yeah. up on the inside and never gets there because the person pushing through gets a score. I'll take and the opportunity then- to, oh, sorry, go for it. Sorry, just on that agent, usually then on that flip side, if somebody is floating that up there, we're getting no reward. If you have a, a nice tidy back kick in the back pocket there that you can spin around that because of the side it's on, mm. it can be very, very beneficial. And I think, is that is that the, the segue that we have there now? No, uh, we're, we're, we're going to have a look oh, at no, something else. No, no. I was going to answer Stay the question. Tuned. I was going to answer a question from uh, uh, our uh, Korean follower here. Um, so the, the question was, is it possible to participate in the uh, in our ITF, uh, given that you belong to a different ITF group? And the answer to that one is, yeah, there is an opportunity actually in the World Cup in Mar- uh, Maribor, Slovenia, 2022. So the end of next year, uh, October, I think next year, the World Cup is open to all of the ITF federations. So regardless of where you happen to do your training, uh, you're very welcome to come and attend that. The stipulations are, I think you only have to be blue belt and higher 12 and above. Other than that, I think you probably are. So other than that, contrast. yeah, and we're expecting that to be big and busy. Or it will anyway. Mm-hmm. But oh, there's be- another comment that we missed there, sorry, from Brendan. Oh. He just mentioned that footwork session will be worth looking into from last Tuesday. I appreciate that, Brendan. Uh, we, we did a great session last Tuesday, so check that out if you're interested in footwork. We actually covered a lot of these topics mm. and uh, ways you can set them up, so appreciate the shout out. So what I want to do is contrast a little bit that same turning kick, but when we go right versus right, and it looks a million miles different. So um, this one is Axel Vargas and Jamie Williams in the Warrior Open uh, just before COVID. Um mm. So we see this neutral neutralizing shot under the front leg. So it's the same thing. There's a little bit of denial of the hip. You have to pull the, uh, you know, the body back as you throw the shot. You're reaching out with the toes just to get a tap on it. And it's just about breaking momentum. It's looking for a cheeky score. Um, but the difference in terms of the intent on the shot is like is massive. Like there, there's so much more. If you get that uh, front hip out of the way as you throw the back leg turning kick when you've got the opposite facing, it's a far more substantial shot. This is like mm-hmm. maybe just disrupt the rhythm. You're not going to take the balance necessarily with this one. Yeah, it's it's, it's funny the way they just throw a shot for shot here almost in this sequence. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's very important because if you can allow your opponent to get that momentum on you, it, like you'd probably end up losing space, especially I noticed in that ring, it's quite smaller than the Tiny. regular ring. Is, is that true? Yeah, yeah, that was so only if you can al- seven by seven, I think, yeah. So if you allow your opponent to get three or four like steps on you, it's and then they have the momentum, it's very, very difficult. So you can mm. tell that two top-level intelligent fighters there, and um, they know what to do. They're not leaving anybody squeeze the space on them so much. It's really a nice disruptive shot. Yeah. Probably won't get much return on it, like you said, Adrian, no. because of the, the angle and things like that, but it just stops that momentum from building. Well, when, Especially if someone has a pattern where they like to lead off with their front leg and let the leg drop into hands whereas none of the guys did that in this particular sequence but if that front leg drops with the intent to go into hands then this front leg dolio really does break it up or stops them dropping the leg to go to hands because there's already a contact so you know it can be used as a little bit of a disruptive shot that way and uh, mm-hmm. i know jamie likes to use it like that just to make sure that if someone is looking to come to hands, they may concede two points on the way, you know, and it's uh, and, and then the hands aren't guaranteed. So it's just a little bit of a uh, keep people polite, you know? Yeah, um, definitely. So we do get to look now at this blindside flicky that you lefties love so much. So, uh, and a guy who, like, I was listening to him uh, in an interview about this as well, Julio Carlos, and he loves this shot. He loves this. Uh, so no surprise, a left-legged fighter, but he does execute this well yeah it's a great shot and it's it's a good one because it, there's almost barely any counter to it and i feel like that's why it's it's such a good one as well it's like mm. once you're get into a certain position and once your foot is literally higher than their fist it's like you can trap their front hand so they have nothing to defend themselves on that front side 
and you're, it's, nobody's fast enough to transition their backhand across the other side. So no. the only other option you have is to really move your shoulder and tuck it up super, super high to your head and hoping that it hits a bit of a shoulder to not make it a clear score. So it's, uh, that's one of the best parts about this shot is that if you can get, if you can get it off around here, and then, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult to counter and defend. Yeah, and again, we, we look at another example from uh, Vitali here against Thomas Fogarty at uh, European Championships in Bosnia. But um, yeah, it's as you said, your your real way of countering that is you go forward faster and you like, yeah. push yourself into the into the shin, into the knee, so the foot doesn't get to extend. But your momentum is your speed is already set, and it's up to the person throwing the shot to read it. Um, and of course, if it's an attack you have a better chance of stepping into it. So, you know, here Thomas is met, we say, with the shot. But, like, if, if the person is picking up the foot, to, uh, from we say, from this distance and then just going to attack with it, yeah, you have the option of just stepping into it and closing it off. But uh, but but that's really it. It's very, very hard. You, or the other one who said, uh, check the hair, which is the, <laughs> you know, um, you're pulling the front foot back, or the front hand back and brushing the hair with it and hoping that it arrives in time. But it's... Like it, it, it's such a, a blind shot. It's coming from your hip level, and then suddenly it appears over your shoulder. So, yeah, it, it's definitely whether you're right legged or left legged. It is a shot that opens up for you when that situation emerges, and you need it. Like I think mm. if there was it, to take the opposite of Lawrence's question, if there's a shot you need when you're right versus left, it's this shot. Yeah, you need to have this in in, in the bank. Um, yeah, I think like, and we've seen two options there as well. It's nice to see that contrast. Mm. Uh, Vitaly's one was a bit more direct, where yeah. he didn't move any part of his body. He just literally lifted his front leg using Thomas's forward momentum, versus Julio did it on the more attacking side, where his knee came from the chamber position, mm -hmm. where it could have been to the body, and it just sneaks over that blind side shoulder. So very, very important. There's a few other options as well. There's like that what we call a sneaky blinder. So as your yeah. opponent lands their own side kick you can just pull your hip to the outside and come up around the outside. So it's, it's nice if you can get uh, the concept down here and play with it. It's one that you'll see a lot, especially guys who maybe aren't that um, experienced. And again, if you've got that hip mobility, if you've, uh, it's great. But it's also a very forgiving shot for those who are less flexible because you can do it with a drop tip. So I don't have a good example of that in video, but you can basically have your front hip in... In, uh, inwardly rotated so once you lift the knee up if you drop the knee towards the floor that has the effect of sending your foot up and over the shoulder and it actually disguises the kick as well and if you want to have mm. some good examples of that um have a look at some of uh, Maciek Suk. now he'll do it from the back leg but it's the same principle so he'll send the foot up as if it's a front kick or a downward kick and then the knee inverts turns to the floor the hip rolls over and the foot just Question suddenly mark kick the question mark kick, the uh, app dolio, the flicky dolio, the you know whatever you want to call it. There's a lot of um, a lot of the sly little names for it, but it's a it's a sneaky one. It just creeps over the shoulder Brilliant. there, and when it lands, it tends to just stick on the face, which is great for the scores yeah. as well. Is it good for the judges? You have to make the judges' job easy, yeah. Exactly. Um, but as well on that one, if you just miss that blindside dolio, there's a lot of time because your hip rotates in mm. that there's going to be a nice option if they come forward into you that there, there's going to be a nice option for a defensive psychic here or almost kind of like that knee down defensive psychic. Yeah. And um, so that is a nice option as well that you can almost bait people in with that as well. Set them up, use that high dolio, but cut it a bit short to set them up for that defensive shot is another option. Absolutely. So um, we're going to have a look at Julio again. In this case, it's uh, against Maxime, but it illustrates a couple of things for us as well as having that uh, uh, blindside dolio. But one of the things that happens as uh, Maxim looks to get out to his open side here, and this turning kick just isn't available when you have the opposite facing. Um, mm. So it's just something to be very cautious and aware of. Like you probably have some built in routines when it comes to your evasive movement at the edge of the ring. And it's just to be aware that like that evasive movement could actually be dangerous. And one of the things that, uh, you know, Julio can do here is definitely look to push more towards the left so uh, edge of the ring than the right to offer that out to Maxime and invite him onto the turning kick. Um, mm. So, you know, we it's see, we've seen this with uh, Milos, didn't we, last week? Was it last yeah. week or the week before? Yeah. Where um, he, he was almost on the other side of reverse. So he's in Maxime's position, position and he brought... Maciek Zuck to one side and invited in that turning kick where he we did. see here now with the right leg to set up a back kick. So uh, check out that episode if you want to see a very, 
variant on that and of course it's so much easier then throw that blindside dolio for julio once max team has been pinned because you know yeah. there's no movement to judge then you don't have any distance to judge it's so much easier um but again worth pointing out i think just because that particular option isn't available when you both have the same leg in the front and um, so you know you're having to f- wait for the person to try and open out and go lateral to maybe have a look at a fr- at that which is why from a training point of view i often train my guys more to look for a front kick uh than a turning kick um you know julio's it, position there is it yeah yeah and yeah. Uh, purely because if they have the opposite leg in front the front kick still connects with something it's not necessarily a score but it connects with something and you know if you're as i said if your motor program is i'm going to throw a dolio when someone moves that way um you know in the situation where maybe it's 60 70 percent of the time they're going to have the other leg in front and you're going to kick him in the back it's not great uh mm-hmm. so you know i often start with the with the, the front kick as a uh, as an option oh very cool we've got south america here as well so uh, greetings to uh, uh, our, our guest from uruguay uh really good to see you um so we we're going to jump onto that uh, change a leg so what can happen when you uh make a quick change and put yourself on the other facing um and mm. i think the key to this is you want to change and execute before the person recognizes that every the whole world is flipped upside down basically when you change legs yeah if you wait on this one too long it's mm. just not going to be there so you'll see in the couple of kips that we see it's a tra- it's a seamless transition from one leg to the other so left leg is in front and then switch and now it's option so that's one of the ones that we mentioned earlier on that you can't really spin to the blind side most of the time but you can put your front leg to the back in one motion to set up yeah. the, the open side and you know it's super clean like the you know the change happens and then it's because the opponent reacts there he gets this shot but uh but it's it's just such a clean score and you know they kind of come out of the blue a little bit just because the majority of the match will be in that more close position and then the the shot suddenly becomes available because of the change of legs this is catch Mm -hmm. a uh against poland and very much the same concept yeah, it's, just, it's like the seamless, the transition. It's not a big weight. And what I really like about that one as well, she spun into it, so it was really unusual. If you can get the distance spinning in, that's impressive. And even putting that leg to the back here, buy in your time. I think the biggest part about that back, back kick shot is look how long she waited. Yeah, she's traveled Most half people, the ring. Yeah, 90% of people, after they throw that um, axe kick, they would have landed and thrown it directly, just hoping, hitting hope. Mm. but it's just that, that that just shows the class of Katya she was able to wait 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 and when her balance was set and it was ready she landed it before we go on to uh Collins on there I just want to kind of point out that the three different ways almost that Katya has done it so like a sw- uh, swap in place uh as you said to to get onto the other leg in this case where she's dropped the leg back and had to make space uh to bring her left foot behind for the back kick and uh and then we have a, a continuation here where she's uh, uh sorry in the next one uh where she's going forward to hands and uh manages to put the the band in the back of it but this step through which could often be a back leg turning kick so what we'd expect mm. to see here would be a back leg turning kick recover band aid but she just ends up stepping through because of where her opponent moves to um but you know those are things you can plan for uh you know and everyone has a preference they want to throw particular shots and different le- you know legs etc um you know it's just something that we can you know really plan for train for expect and build into the routines mm. and one of the best things about this as well is that most people that lead off the left leg is yeah. it's their favorite leg so when you switch that to the open side for it to land it's still your favorite leg so most of the time you're going to be probably more comfortable with it on that side and um, but that doesn't mean that you can't that you don't have a right legged spinning technique in your arsenal because when you come up against somebody who's left v left yeah. All right, feel right. You need it for that other side. So you need to have your your weaker leg, we say, ready to spin. Even if it's a back kick, maybe it's not a bandit, but you need a spinning option. We've seen that in um, our bandit um, fight chat Friday. I think it was two or three episodes ago that you do need that option on both sides. So either it's a back kick or a bandit, but you do need it um, on both legs. For sure. Um, 
we're going to take a quick question there for uh, because this is something that actually comes up for us an awful lot in terms of the questions on Instagram comments on YouTube videos and everything uh, from again our uh, our friend in Uruguay so very new to take Wonderworld I'm an MMA fighter but we base a lot on Muay Thai kicks question is why in most of the clips that we use uh, don't they use their hands to defend high kicks and the question is uh, often asked as well why are your hands so low um, I suppose the very first and quick answer to that is there's a, a, a couple of fundamental differences that really come into play. The lack of ropes is a big, big deal. We always have space behind, which means we can almost always move away from a high kick uh, or a kick of any description and make some space. So we'll generally defend in Taekwondo with movement rather than with blocking. So blocking is just mm. something that uh, it's taking away an opportunity to score. So if we can move and counter score, we will tend to look for that as a preference. Um, so that'd be kind of the first thing I would say on that one. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think... Just another thing to add on to that as well is is in Muay Thai, they have that guard a little bit higher mm. because um, and they can take the kicks here on the arms. And the yeah. reason is, is because there's a few reasons. Number one, they're a bit more full-facing. We're yeah. more half-facing from what we've seen in all these clips. And not only that, but th there's more emphasis in power yeah. and, and finishing people in Muay Thai, where there's a bit more emphasis in um, speed and moving on to the next technique and flow in yeah. ITF Taekwondo. So by if you put everything into one shot, somebody's just going to move out of the way. Whereas the, the objective in Muay Thai, for example, is not really to score points, it's to, it's to inflict damage. So yeah. then it, it allows you to really settle and, and drive shots in, which means you're more grounded, which means that you might have to take shots more as opposed to being light on your feet. Yeah, and, and equally as you go into the MMA game, like you're not too worried about you know taking shots to the body that aren't damaging or taking shots to the legs that aren't damaging, you know, as long as it improves your position and puts you in a position to like to, to really inflict a, you know, a, a, a score that counts you know a, a, a punch or a kick that really counts mm. that lands in a sweet spot so you know there is a different philosophy across that and you know our more side fight side facing stances are absolutely because first things first we'll be looking to deny scoring opportunities to your opponent and second thing is then look for scoring opportunities for your uh, for yourself and i think that like it really does underlie the ethos of it what we're thinking in terms of the hand position and why the hands are often lower uh, it, it, not necessarily around the belt but sometimes you'll have someone carrying a hand here and one low into the front um at the longer ranges the lower kicks are more of a, a score threat because the, it's the the longest tool over the shortest distance uh whereas you know we're we we'll, once you get to a closer distance you will see the hands come up generally you know that's that mm -hmm. that's just going to be a thing it's almost like inviting as well it, it's like initiating shots of, of maybe inviting that entry shot that the first one mm. so it, sometimes but you're just safer at that further out distance i mean the distance that you have there the there's no necessarily need to keep your hands that high. But as you said, once you get into that closer range, you'll see there will be an adjustment of hands. Yeah. Because not only to punch correctly and to be more efficient in your punches, but also to defend. So maybe we have a look at um, that change of legs, but leading into a back kick this time rather than the uh, the band -aid. Uh And this one goes back to 2017 in Ireland again. And look at the different way we get into it. So this is very much like Catch's uh, uh, back kick, where... Is throwing the turning kick and missing has set up that back kick and that's like almost like what we were saying with the blind side flicky um you know into the, the the kind of knee down side kick or the half back kick um but you know it's it's definitely uh you know something that you again you can plan for so that if that lands the recovery is going to be foot to foot and the back kick is still there if it misses okay you're on the other side you might as well have the back kick ready to go anyway so mm. i think it's quite a nice one yeah, so it's like what we said earlier. It's like when you go for that dalio, and it was one of the comments. It's mm. when when it's in this side, you're looking for the back leg. So that natural spin of the hip, that if it you overextend or if you miss, it does set up that back kick quite nicely. And um, so it is a good option to have there. And again, that's why you need it on both sides. Yeah, very very important. Yeah. Um, quick question there as well from uh, again coming from Murby in uh, Korea. The question is, uh, was it forbidden to use hooks or uppercuts in our competition? And uh, so our rules are really permissive, actually. It's quite simple. Uh, it's hand techniques that land with the glove and specifically with the part of the glove that's indicated in white. Uh, and you'll see that I'll, I'll jump into one of the clips and we can maybe have a look to see that the um, 
you can see that there's a white portion on the gloves for both blue and red uh, competitors there. So as long as the hand technique lands with the white portion of the glove, uh, it's going to be legal. Um, so that means we can throw things that are more hook, uppercut, back, uh, back fist or backhand. Um, you know, a, a lot more of the, would say the techniques from the patterns could emerge. But again, you're looking for what's efficient. So there will be places where a hook or an uppercut makes sense. Um, but we just don't see them that often because things are like in ITF Taekwondo, it tends to be uh, quite explosive. So when it comes to hands, often one person it goes through hands range and ends up inside hands range and the other person pushes in, we end up in a clinch and we're not left in the clinch for the hooks and uppercuts to develop. So you'll often see a much longer hook. Uh, yeah. So that will be there. Um, but an uppercut is rare to see, but we do see them. And when they're done you know at the appropriate time they can be absolutely devastating so we've seen uh jamie counter uh a blitz with an uppercut which was um quite fun to see at the time uh, and a nice. hell of a shock for his opponent but uh you know things like that can can certainly sneak in there contact mm -hmm. is still an issue and there's often a perception that you know a hook or an uppercut it's not that they'll they'll hit harder but because they're coming from an unexpected angle they can be more effective and cause more damage uh, so sometimes contact is an issue for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. But it's it, that's almost like a myth that people think that they're not allowed to be used. Mm. Yeah, so it's all all hand techniques with, with under, under control and used with the correct tool are, are allowed in um, the sport. But as we said, it's the rules and the scoring system which which um, differentiate what is valuable, what is efficient, and what is mm. not. And just based on the speed and the scoring system and what's rewarded for our point system then certain shots work, something, certain shots don't because they may put you in a difficult position. They may make you vulnerable with another shot. So that, that that's what it all comes down to in all sports. It depends on the rule set and the scoring systems. For sure. So just one more clip. Uh, so we'll have a look at uh, our, our good friend Julio once again. Just uh, This is one from, you know, we've had this in a couple of videos, but it's just another great example of the change of leg and the, the balance. Uh, so until the very end there, you wouldn't know what leg Julio prefers. But for, I think from our clips, mm. it's been obvious to everyone that he's a left-legged uh, fighter and his better Russian opponent here is a right-legged fighter. Um, and it's because he's been lateral stepping for the most part. When he does put the, the left leg back, Belarus doesn't have long to react before that kick hits. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's all again, we, we spoke about this more in detail on a, on a different kind of an idea in the whole idea of footwork and rhythm. Mm. It's just being that step ahead of your opponent there is so important as well. And it's the same thing. We mentioned it earlier that if you step and wait for that shot on the open side, it's probably not going to present itself. And yeah. when I was looking for clips for, for today's show, actually, it came up a lot. Yeah. And I seen that when people step and they hold and they wait. And it's very, very obvious that you can see that oh, they're, they're waiting to spin. And, and either the person will draw out the spin by faking to go, yep. make you spin, and they'll go directly through you with hands, or they'll just move off and get you to reset again. So you got to be discreet with it. Um, and one of the comments came in there earlier said it was like an instantaneous switch of feet that you you wouldn't be able to notice it. Mm. Yeah, and again, I think that kind of brings us to the end of the cliffs that we wanted to share with everybody. But I think the um, like for me, the overall thing is it's it's actually almost a different match. Like when you uh, when you spar same leg in front versus opposite leg in front, you need to almost flick a switch because the shot selection changes, the range of counters changes, the uh, you know the, the little subtle things in the tactics like we saw with Julio and uh, Maxime where we're pushing for a corner and there's a different shot available because of the leg that's in front. That option of going blindside, the flicky dodo, which is such a high return shot when it's available. Um, the change in how the blitz works you know so many of these things change subtly but but with a really important effect on the match so i think it's it's really something that people need to be considering in their training and so maybe we uh, finish off today's session talking about uh tuesday and the kind of things that we might look to uh introduce in our live training session on this topic on tuesday yeah yeah so for people that don't know and maybe tuning in for the first time um, on Tuesday at the minute, because we're on lockdown here in Ireland, we're having live training sessions on YouTube Live. So what we do is on Fridays, we have our Fight Chat Friday, which is what you're watching now. And then on the Tuesday, we try to replicate um, and maybe bring out some concepts that we can use practically 
from the show. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the plan for next Tuesday um, at 6.15 in Irish time, GMT. Um, 7.15. Yeah. Testing you. Testing you. Yeah, uh, so 7.15 GMT, Irish time. But we're going to now work on some concepts that we've seen today and some things that you can use to set up and um, switches of the feed, things like that. So if you have any questions or any things that you would like to see, sorry, yeah, <laughs> uh, to see us to, to clarify maybe, drop them in here in the comment box or maybe drop us a message before Tuesday and maybe we can address that and the, the practical side of it. Um, so it's great to have sit down here, very enjoyable to have the chats, more of like the theory side, and then we can try to bring it up into um, the training. And one of the most important things about the training that we mentioned, and Adrian mentioned it in today's show, is that if you're an absolute drill merchant and you're drilling, 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 and things are becoming so muscle memory that you react a certain way, it might not always be effective. So we've seen with Katja Solovey today the, the way she waited for that back kick for the right moment. Mm. And um, we've seen with Julio with um, not kicking to the back. All of these things are so important. So uh, we, we'll also teach you on Tuesday some concepts and some ways to train to make that a bit more realistic to get it from your training into your performance. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the basic premise will be uh, we'll show you or we'll take you through a warm up, give you some specific exercises that are going to suit the drills, activities, exercises that uh, are going to suit that session. And then we'll look at the kind of shots that you can throw, how you might set them up and how you might train them with and without a partner. And that will basically form our, our session for Tuesday. So that has been Friday. Yeah, I really enjoyed the live show today. It was our um, our first one. So it was great to have people, as we talk through things live, asking us questions on mm. that topic. So it was great. And thanks for tuning in. Thanks for getting involved in the comments. Uh, make sure and hit this video a like if you haven't done so already. We see that uh, we also mentioned there that we have new fans. Thanks very much for that in the comments. So subscribe if you haven't. And if you're new, get involved. And yeah, thank you so much for watching again. And hopefully we'll see you guys on Tuesday. Absolutely. Happy weekend.